Welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm Ed Collins, and my special guest here today is Bob Kreitz. Bob, I see that you've got a, a Corona panel and a V-Series. Can you take us through and show us some stuff about this? I sure can. The V-Series is one of the smaller brothers in the family of switchers from Grass Valley. The first smallest brother is the Kula, and then it jumps to the V-Series with the Corona. After that, it jumps to an S-Series with the Carrera, then the Kahuna and the Maverick, and after that, the K-Frame X. The V-Series frame is a frame that is a no-compromise production switcher. What we mean by this is that you never have to borrow resources from anywhere else on the switcher to make something happen, happen somewhere else. You have all of those resources available in their entirety anytime that you need them. It is a modular design, easily reconfigured and serviceable in the field if you need to. There's a total of 32 ins by 16 outs. Your choices now include SDI, but also IP, and in any configuration, all IP, all SDI, or in any combination when divided up into these cards. This is the backplane of the V. There's four slots. When you look closer at each of those individual slots, you'll see that each card now handles both inputs and outputs. We used to do just ins and just outs on separate cards. We now do them as one. Eight in, four out on each card. You put in four of those slots and you get a total of 32 by 16 in, again in any combination of SDI or IP in the four slots. On the bottom right-hand corner is reference. The far right side is dual redundant power supplies. The large DIN connector is for tally and GPI. Followed then on the left side by the built-in giggy switch and nine pin ports. You can control external devices either over ethernet or by the serial ports utilizing the free included protocols of AMP protocol or VDCP. The V-Series is built like a tank. It's only 3RU tall, but it has a mid-plane in which all of the I.O. cards plug into from the back. The power supplies slide in from the back. And then there are three cards that slide in from the front. A controller card, an ME card, and lastly, a optional 3D IDPM card. When the user buys this card, they get DVEs that are capable of rotation, perspective, blur, and lighting. Everything then is held in place by the fan assembly, and it cools then from front to back. In addition to the regular 8x4 inputs, each of those cards have something called a media port. This is an HDI connector that allows you to take an output of such things like a computer, scale it, lock it automatically as an input, so you can have four of those because there's one of those connectors on each of those cards. And then there are two of those outputs. If you prefer, you don't even have to convert any longer SDI to HDMI because there are two outputs which in turn can plug directly in to your monitors. If you needed a frame synchronizer or the ability to scale or convert, then as an option when you order your V, you can indicate that you want scalar cards instead of regular input and output cards. There's a built-in image store with eight channels of video plus key available, just like its big brother. Something very unique to the V-Series is an idea called VPE. Video Processing Engine is what VPE stands for, and you have two of them in the V. It is designed initially so that you can do simple effects like creating wipes and mixes in AUGS outputs. But if you don't need it for that, they can also be used as full MEs. For instance, if I were to buy a 2ME V-Series and then utilize the two additional VPEs as MEs, I would have paid for 2MEs and ended up for a total of four MEs. This is very powerful for our customers. Every single keyer has full functionality. That is linear, luminance, chrominance, and preset pattern. 
also 2D resizers on every keyer. So in this example, you could have up to 20 chroma keys if you needed it. Lastly, there are two built-in internal multi-viewers. These are very powerful, offering 14 panes and five presets each. So Bob, the Corona is the newest panel in the Grass Valley lineup. Can you tell us a little bit about what you like about it? I sure can. To me, the most important thing is how it changes color. If you'll notice the stripe here, as I go from it first being on program, which is red, to ME1, which changes to green, then ME2, which is yellow, ME3 is orange, ME4 is purple, and then back to program again. This is a great tool for operators at a fast glance to know which ME that each of these stripes are controlling. The other big neat thing about the Corona panel is that in addition to a touchscreen located up here, there's a second touchscreen and a third by each fader bar. In addition to changing the stripe delegation, which I just have done, I can come here to work on macros, AUGS buses, and external device control. So, Bob, one thing that we hear time and time again from operators is how good this menu system is and how easy it is to navigate. Can you show us around? I sure can. You've said it. People love it because it's easy to use. Engineers have taken the top-level menu buttons, which used to be at the top of the screen, and your hand was always in the way, and moved it right to the bottom of the screen. The next best thing is that there are always only two levels of menu. Go to any one of these top-level menus, and if there's more to be selected, it will be selected in the very next row along with that functionality up top. Next, it keeps track of my running history. Where was I four buttons ago? Or if you simply want to jump back and forth between the last menu where you were at, you simply press that top button, and now you're jumping back and forth between the two. Lastly, you can take your favorite menus and store them in one of 100 settings so that at any point in time you select it and you're there. Well, Bob, thanks for all your expertise in taking us through a great tour of the V-Series and the Corona. So if you'd like more information about it, please schedule a demo.